Hey guys, Levelcap here, and today in gaming, the Warzone Twitch Rivals tournament spun out of control thanks to cheating accusations, 35 CSGO players have been banned for match fixing, Xbox Live Gold is getting a price hike, and much more. The latest Twitch Rivals event for Call of Duty Warzone wrapped up yesterday with a flurry of cheating accusations. It all began when a player known as Metzi got some very suspicious kills and the entire event was paused for an hour so the Twitch tournament admins could investigate. They eventually determined Metzi was cheating and kicked him out of the event along with the rest of his team. Metzi denies he was cheating and went so far as to allow someone to have remote access to his PC while live to prove he has no cheats installed. All of this brought the integrity of Warzone's anti-cheat solution into question. What makes matters even worse is that everyone involved in the event was live streaming their gameplay. So not only were people cheating while streaming, the people on the receiving end of their foul play were also recording. Now regardless of whether or not Metzi was cheating, the fact remains that Warzone players view the game's anti-cheat as ineffective or even non-existent. Now Warzone does have anti-cheat and it's likely catching people by the thousands every day. Warzone is a massively popular free-to-play game, it's easy to make new accounts and keep on playing if you've been banned and being such a high profile game means the best cheat makers are constantly developing new software for the game. And even though developers at AAA studios like Activision are very skilled in preventing cheat makers, well, they're competing with thousands of cheat makers crowdsourcing their exploits and reverse engineering countermeasures. And it makes everybody doubt every other player, even when those players are live streaming their gameplay so that you can watch how they're playing. Popular esports personalities and content creators took to social media calling on Activision to address the situation directly with a statement about their anti-cheat efforts. To date, Activision have said they do regular ban waves and routinely catch tens of thousands of cheaters. Based on the frequency of cheating in Warzone, that doesn't seem to be enough. The bright spot in all of this is that Riot and Bungie just teamed up against Gator Cheats, one of the most prominent cheat providers around, and got them shut down. Other cheat sites are likely on the chopping block as more companies go after them through the legal system. It seems like real-life legal consequences will be the only thing that deters cheaters in the long term. Of course, cheating isn't exclusively a Warzone problem. 35 CSGO players have been banned following a two-year investigation by the ESIC. The players in question were banned for match fixing. The investigation examined matches played across Australia, America, and Europe. The bans range from 12 to 60 months depending on the severity. Match fixing is just the latest wave of issues for CSGO, but it's also one of the oldest. Six players and the owner of Netcode Guides were famously banned in 2015 after esports journalist Richard Lewis exposed a plot for players to throw a match in exchange for valuable in-game skins. To this day, none of those banned players can compete in official Valve tournaments. Microsoft are hiking up the price of Xbox Live Gold by $1 for a one-month membership and $5 for a three-month membership. The increased pricing means one year of Xbox Live Gold is now $120. What makes this price hike a little odd is that the Xbox brand is booming right now. Obviously, supply shortages are bottlenecking the growth of the Xbox Series consoles, but Microsoft just reported revenue was up by 12% in October of 2020. The trend of increasing subscription prices has been growing in popularity recently, with companies like Netflix and Amazon steadily raising prices every couple of years or so. The saving grace in Microsoft's case is that Xbox Live is included in Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, includes a gold subscription, and is only $1 for the first three months. If anything, it seems like Microsoft are trying to phase out the standalone gold subscription in favor of the more inclusive Game Pass. The Halo Master Chief Collection is getting a massive Season 5 update on the 27th. It will include 80 pieces of new armor, brand new weapon skins, new seasonal challenges with 4 unique rewards, and will be live on all platforms. The majority of the new content is for Halo 3 and Reach. Some players are concerned the new cosmetics take away from the old school appeal of the games, but the developers added a toggle that disables cosmetics. Dead by Daylight players have been requesting accessibility options like colorblind support since the game launched. One of the game's developers finally broke down while live streaming to address the request. He referred to the demands as badgering and said if it gets done, it'll get done when we have time to do it. 
This response was taken pretty poorly by the gaming community as accessibility options are becoming a mainstream necessity. Steven Spohn, the COO of Able Games, a charity group dedicated to helping gamers with accessibility concerns, eventually responded to the developer. Spohn said that if you're tired of being badgered about it, imagine how tired people are of not being able to play your game because it's inaccessible to them. It seems like the outrage caused by the clip has prompted the developers to take action. They released an early look at some colorblind options being developed last night and promised they'll have more to share soon. The big reveal of Resident Evil 8 premiered yesterday. The presentation was filled with first looks at gameplay, characters, plot points, and more. We also got a first look at Reverse, an upcoming multiplayer game set in the Resident Evil universe. While much of the conversation about the reveal concerns the um, 12 foot tall vampire lady with wolverine blades for fingers, the big takeaway includes the release date for Village. It launches on May 7th for PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X. Last gen versions are also launching on the 7th. PlayStation 5 owners can download a demo of the Maiden section of the game. It's a pretty impressive showcase of the game's technical aspects and gameplay mechanics. The demo will be available on other platforms in the spring. The showcase presentation runs through most of the demo though, so even if you don't have a PlayStation 5, you can still get a decent feel for what it will offer. Overall, it looks like The Village will be a pretty big step up from Resident Evil 7. That game was praised for returning the franchise to its roots while updating the gameplay for the modern era. But it was also criticized for feeling like a bunch of different mini-games slapped together and didn't exactly impress in terms of resolution or performance on last-gen consoles. A leaker is saying Resident Evil 7 is getting a next-gen upgrade. Nothing official has been revealed yet, but it would be a massive deal for console players if this is true. The leaker also says Capcom are exporting VR support for the village, but it might be off the table due to performance concerns. Resident Evil 7's VR mode is widely praised as one of the better VR translations of a non-VR game. Still, it suffers from many of the early VR gaming's more significant issues like poor performance and extreme limitations that hinder the visual presentation. Before we get to today's final story, I just wanted to say thank you for watching this week. If you missed any of the big news stories this week, we'll have a full recap out tomorrow covering the most noteworthy headlines. So stay tuned for that and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Path of Exile's new expansion, Echoes of Atlas, is officially the game's most successful expansion to date. The developers announced the expansion hit a record 265,000 concurrent players during the launch. That's up 11% from the game's previous concurrent player record. Path of Exile is one of the most successful live service games out to date. It has seen near constant growth since the original launch in 2013. In that time, it's had over 30 quarterly league releases and tons of major updates. When the most recent expansion launched, the game shot up to the top 4 spot on Steam's most popular list. Path of Exile 2 is currently in development for a 2022 release window. And that wraps it up for Today in Gaming. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.